Hello everyone, I'm Laura Nicola, I'm your faithful therapist. Thank you for joining me today. The video today is just about mental health stigma within the church, so thanks for being here. Mental health stigma is unfortunately something that is very common still in society, and so it's no surprise that the stigma also exists within the church. Most of my clients that I work with are Christian or Catholic based, and they share things in session with me about, you know, things that other people in their community say to them that is contributing to the mental health stigma. It's almost kind of shaming them for having mental health issues because they're part of the church. And some of these things just break my heart, you know? It, there's a misconception that mental health issues exist because of some sort of spiritual health deficit. And that's just not true, you know? So these three things in this video are just things to be aware of so you're not unconsciously also contributing to the mental health stigma. So the first point here is to remember that faith and psychology are not diametrically opposed. God created us mind, body, and soul. So why is it that if we struggle mentally that we tend to blame it on the soul? This is just misinformation. Faith and psychology are very much intertwined. I mean, you can have both parts that are healthy. You can have, you know, your, your soul is struggling. Your mind could be struggling. Your body could be struggling. But it doesn't mean that the other part is causing you to struggle in that way. And actually integrating faith in psychology, so using faith in therapy, is actually proven by research to be more effective in a person's healing than by not using it. The second point here is to not assume that a person with mental health issues is a bad Catholic. This is one of those things that I've heard from clients that people have said to them, which is so hurtful, right? If it weren't for confidentiality, I would seriously shout from the rooftops about people's issues. I mean, not really, but go with me for a second on this. If everybody in your community knew that other people were struggling with mental health, don't you think there would be more of an understanding, more of an empathy, more of a sense of community? I mean, I have so many people that come to me in session that are in, you know, roles of authority in the church, uh, you know, are, are very much involved in their community. I have people more often than you would think share in session with me, oh, if, if so-and-so, you know, in my community or in my neighborhood knew that I was in counseling, they would be shocked. And this just makes me sad, you know? The fact that we have to be ashamed of it, that we have to hide it, is, is just, it, it breaks my heart. And so, hence the reasons for these videos too. So, we're called not to judge, first of all, of, over anybody else's faith, you know, or spiritual life. So especially if we know that there's a mental health struggle, why, why would we judge that as something that's a deficit spiritually? That's just not fair. So be careful if you kind of say stuff like that. My third point here is be careful of suggesting that the person just offer it up. We've all heard this, right? Somebody's suffering, oh, offer it up. That's not like entirely bad. I'm just saying that be careful when talking to somebody that is struggling with mental health, be careful of your wording around faith-based things. Because somebody saying just offer it up is kind of like the, the Catholic equivalent to just get over it. Just stop being depressed. Don't be anxious. You know, you know pornography is a sin, so just quit it. Stop drinking already. I mean, I could go on and on, right? But we, we have to put ourselves in the other person's shoes. Don't you think that person that's struggling wants to be healed? Don't we think they don't want to be depressed or anxious or hurt or traumatized? Of course they do. Of course they want that healing. So by saying just offer it up, we're kind of minimizing what they're actually going through. So just be aware of that language. I'm, in a later video, I'm going to get into kind of more the intricacies of relating psychology and faith, so stay tuned for that. But I hope this was helpful. It's brief. It's short. But I, I really would be curious what you guys think. So please leave comments. Let me know if you've accidentally fallen into one of these traps. Let me know if you've been on the receiving end of one of these. I would just, I would be really curious, you know, how you guys feel about this video. So please let me know. 
And be sure to subscribe below if you haven't already. I really appreciate the subscribers. Also follow me on Instagram at your faithful therapist on IG. I post daily there different tips, tricks, techniques, insights, that kind of thing relating mental health and psychology. So be sure to, to follow me there as well as stay tuned for the next video. Thank you so much. Bye.